Now, Joshua. Joshua is down at Jericho. You can see the Dead Sea there, Salt Sea, and then just up from there is Jericho. Joshua made an alliance with the Gibeonites. Okay, let me hit the button here for the Gibeonites. The city of Gibeon. Do you remember the Gibeonites dressed up in old clothes? They brought old food, and they said, we've come from a thousand miles away from here and stuff. Look at all our stuff. These sandals were good, and now they're all worn out. We want to make an alliance with you because we've heard about your God, and we want to make an alliance from you. Question, are they from very far away? Are they from dead center in the middle of Israel? Dead smack dabs straight in the center of Israel they came from. The Jews didn't know. And the Jews, by the way, never consulted with God, and they made an alliance with the Gibeonites. Now, when they make an alliance with the Gibeonites, what happens? Jerusalem, Hebron, Lachish, some other cities of the south, five cities gather together, and they say, we're going to attack the Gibeonites because they made an alliance with Israel. So these five southern cities gather together, and they come up then to attack Gibeon. Gibeon screams out to Joshua, sends guys down to Joshua, saying, Joshua, come and help us. And Joshua's going to march his troops all night, and this is where the sun is going to stand still. Do you remember that? This is where it happens. This is the context for that sun standing still. The five southern cities coming up against Gibeon, Joshua marching all night. Now, when I was in Israel, I was about 25 years old at the time, and we had, uh, the, I had two friends, they were both Dave, and so we call ourselves DDT, um, Dave, Dave, and Ted. And basically, we'd go, we would go out for walks in the desert, okay? So this is desert here. This is desert. Once you get past this road, do you see this road here? This is called the, the, um, oh, this is the, the uh, ridge route. The ridge route, there's a ridge route here. Once you get over to the other side of the ridge route, this is all desert. In other words, all the water gets dropped out here from the Mediterranean Sea, which is down here. Once you get over the ridge, this is desert. It's like California. On the front side of the mountains, there's water. On the back side of the mountain, there's what? Desert. And so the desert's here. So we walked out in the Judean desert from Jerusalem down to Jericho. But we decided one day that any wimp can go from Jerusalem down to Jericho. It's all downhill for like 20 miles and things, at least 25 miles or so. And so we decided we're going to be like Joshua's men. We're going to start at Jericho. We're going to climb these cliffs, and we're going to march the 20 miles across here. We're going to go up to Michmash, just like Joshua's men. By the way, it's uphill, Jericho. Jericho is about 800 feet below sea level. This is up about 2,500 feet above sea level. So you've got about a 3,300 foot climb, well, and then you're climbing like 1,800 feet first and then setting off across the desert. So we were, I, how should I say, I was in really, really good shape. I was, a, believe it or not, at that time I was, uh, I was an athlete. I played basketball for whole college and other things like that, tennis and things. But, uh, so I was, and I was in top shape. We were used to walking in the desert, so we were all tanked up with our water. We start, we climb this first set of cliffs to come out of this valley, okay? This is the Rift Valley. We climb the first set of cliffs, we get up, the temperature starts rising and it gets hotter and hotter in the desert, it starts getting up 110 and things like that. All of a sudden, we're walking across this desert and, by the way, do you walk in the valley or do you walk on the ridge? You always walk on the ridge. We did this when we came out of Bethlehem, we walked in the valley and it was some 12-year-old kid, this is the honest truth, 12-year-old Arab kid was sitting up on the top, and he we were down about 300 feet in this, in this gorge, and he starts chucking rocks at us. I mean, and so we're looking down, bam, bam, these rocks, we look up, this kid's laughing his head off, throwing these rocks, I mean, rocks big enough to take off your head. They drop 300 feet, they hit you, guess what, you got a problem. And so here's this kid laughing, three big American guys, he's got us pinned down as he's chucking rocks, and we take off, we take off running because we couldn't get back up to them. There's cliffs there and stuff, so we take off running. We learned a lesson from that. You don't walk in the valleys, okay? You don't walk in the valleys. You walk on the ridges. So now we're walking on the ridges across the desert. When you walk on the ridge, that means you can't get across. You can't just jump the road. All of a sudden, we start running out of water. When you start running out of water, and it's 110, 115, 120 degrees, all of a sudden, you're getting dehydrated. What happens when you get dehydrated um, do you guys know, have any of you guys fainted? And just before you faint, you start seeing white stars and everything starts going white on you. All of a sudden, we're walking in the desert and things are going awful white and the vision is going closing in. And all of a sudden, you look up. When you look up, you see that there are these critters with wingspan about six feet circling overhead. 
And it turns out you probably know why they're circling overhead. And you look up, and then all of a sudden, from my day and age, you remember a movie that you saw when you were a kid called The Birds. And you just say, hell, did you guys still out? Holy cow, that thing is old. Anyways, and so I'm um, these things that birds going through. So Dave says, he says, oh, we just got to get over this mountain, 394 and stuff. So we're marching and stuff like that. We're out of water, and it's getting really bad. We walk up Mount 394, and we're climbing this mountain. We get up, and he says, if we get over the mountain, the, the mukmas will be on the other side, and we can go down in town, and we get something to drink and stuff. So we're marching up this mountain. We get up to the top of the mountain. We come over the ridge. He's talking about milkshakes coming up the mountain. Oh, it's, it's terrible. I was ready to kill him. We get up over the top of the mountain. We come over the ridge, and there's no mukmas. He read the map wrong, and then we just about did kill him. Okay, he read the map wrong. And when you look out, it was a sickening feeling. Have you any guys, do you guys have respect for the ocean? Have you ever been down the ocean? No, seriously, you look out in the ocean and you say, this is massive. If I were out in the ocean, I would be a speck and it would just gobble me up. I have the same respect for desert. Have you ever been in a desert context when you look out and everywhere you can see is just desert as far as the eye can see and you feel as a human being like you are so puny? And all of a sudden you know you're dehydrated and you know you're in trouble and he just read that stupid map wrong. And it means you've got to go down into the valley and climb the next mountain and hope that the Mukmas is on the other side. We went down the valley, climbed the next mountain, got over to the top. We come into Mukmas. We are like, I mean, beet red. We are, they're all the people in Mukmas, where did you come from? We come from Jericho. Oh, you don't go out on desert days like this. Hot today. Yeah, we know it's hot. <laughs> Jericho. You know, nobody goes down. They come up from Jericho. You don't do that. The guy invites us into a store. He says, anything you want to drink, my friends, anything you want to drink, free. It's on me. So we thought, man, this is great. I never had you know, Arab do something free like that. You're always bartering. This guy said, free. You guys are, we are like heroes of the town, man. Because all these people came in, the Americans, you know, we walked to the desert and stuff. They don't tell you. So then you start drinking this stuff. Well, they don't tell you what, what your brain mostly made of is water, okay? Some people may say air, but mostly it's water, okay? And what happens is when, you're, when you get dehydrated, your brain actually shrinks because it's, it's, it's got a lot of water up there. What happens is that's why you have trouble seeing because your brain actually is collapsing. And also when it pulls in from the cavity of your head, you get the worst, I don't have migraine headaches, I never have. I have a headache that is so strong that it almost takes you off your feet, it hurts so bad. And you can't, can't see, and it just, it's, it just basically because your brain has gone in and the cavity of your head is still out there and your brain's freaking out. Then you start chugging this stuff, right? And they don't tell you that every time you chug this stuff and it goes down, your body is dehydrated and it can't accept the water because you're dousing it with too much. So everything that goes down, guess what? Comes back up. And now that is really, I would say, the worst feeling because you're dying because you need something to drink. Everything you put down comes back up and you're retching your guts out and you say, what's going on here, man? It's just I need something to drink, but I can't hold anything down. So meanwhile, we got a free shoot ride. We were like heroes of town. So we were Belgium or everything was terrible. But anyways, we get home and we end up doing warm milk on a spoon, a spoon at a time. You have to, you have to rehydrate. Some of you guys probably know more about this than I do, but we didn't know what we were doing. All we knew is that none of us stayed down. So you have to take it in real, real slowly so that your body won't upchuck, you know, and stuff. So this is my experience with the desert. Now you say, Hilbert, why do you tell all these stupid stories? Well, 